morning, everyone. It is wonderful to see you all. And I was just thinking, with all the boisterous voices and all the greetings and meeting each other, every week is like a homecoming. Homecoming with family and talking and talking about your weeks and the things going on. It's just a wonderful, glorious thing. And with God and Jesus in our midst all the time, how could we go wrong? Especially with the bright light pouring in, light dispels darkness, and God wins every time. So, good morning, and it's wonderful to see everybody. Do we have any announcements this morning? So if there's no other announcements for now, let's uh, do our call to worship, which is found in both your bulletin and on the screen above you. I will do the leading part, and if you all could be so kind as to read the dark print, please stand if you're able. We come to worship the triune God who creates, redeems, and sustains us all. We come to worship God, who never leaves us, and yet whose purposes often seem hidden. As the bulb hides the flower, as the seed hides the tree, as the cocoon hides the butterfly, so too does God bring forth life even when we cannot see it. We gather today to learn how to watch, wait, and anticipate the season when God's unrevealed work will come into the open. As silence gives way to song, as night gives way to dawn, as the past flows to the present into the future, so too does God tirelessly persist in bringing about the abundant life of the kingdom of heaven. We gather today to learn how to join in God's name as we partner to prepare for the season when God's unrevealed work comes into the open. As our end meets our beginning, as our time meets infinity, as our doubt meets our believing, so too does God meet our brokenness with persevering love, unfolding a new reality of flourishing for all creation. We gather today to learn how to love as God loves so that we may be part of bringing God's unrevealed work into the open. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is To God Be the Glory, number 98 in your hymnals. Please keep standing if you're able. <laughs>
us not to despise small things. Remind us that the kingdom of heaven is like a tiny mustard seed. Turn our attention to the small things that bless others. You have planted seeds of great potential in our souls. Help us develop our potential so that you and others can depend upon it. Turn our attention to what is small but potent. O oh God, you have entrusted us with gifts and graces that can bless many people. Help us not to overlook the smallest ability. O oh God, you have placed the destiny of the kingdom of heaven inside of each of us. Turn our attention to the small things that this congregation can do to make a tremendous effort in human lives. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our heads. God of all blessings, Jesus inspired us through his teaching to see your kingdom as a place where small things can have a mighty impact. A tiny mustard seed planted or a bit of yeast mixed into the flour. We ask you this day to bless the gifts we offer so that they may have a powerful impact when used according to your purposes. Bless us that we might see glimpses of your kingdom through our giving and grow in generosity in the process. In name of Jesus, our Savior and Redeemer, we pray. Amen. our heads in prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, amazing Father, creator of all that is seen and unseen, we are so grateful for your love, your undying love for us, that even sometimes we may think that it's hidden, we know that it is there. We know that you fill us with the Holy Spirit to give us the strength to get through all the things we go through while we're here on this earth. We ask that you give us that strength, you give us that peace, you give us the understanding of your son's words so that we can live our lives as you would have us live them, so that we can love ourselves as we love our neighbors, as we love you with every ounce of our being. Lord, we lift up to you today people in need of healing, people that need you as our great physician to put your healing hands upon their shoulders, to help guide the nurses and the doctors to make the best decisions to find out their ailments and to heal them, Lord, if it be your will. Lord, again, the blessings that you bestow upon us are so innumerable, so many, we can't even express all of them, but we just give you thanks for that. We give you thanks for all the grace that you give us, the grace to live our lives in freedom, to be here today within these four walls in this wonderful sanctuary, to just be with you, to praise you as we've been taught to do. Lord, 
for all the things going on in this world. There is no peace. I learn more and more every day in talking to people and getting briefs on things. The, the world seems to be going, going in the wrong direction. And we know that someday when things get so bad, your son will come again and we will have that new Jerusalem built for us. But until that day, Lord, give us the peace and understanding. Bring peace throughout the world as, as you know how to fulfill your prophecies, the prophecies of all your prophets, in terms of how we will live our lives, in terms of all the things that will go on. Just be with us, Lord. We celebrate all the things that are blessings to us, birthdays and births and all of those things, but we contemplate life. We contemplate what we need to be doing here to, to be your hands and feet on this earth. Lord, just be with us. Give us the strength that we may need. We pray for all these things that we talked about this morning. We pray for all these things that are in our hearts that, that we haven't shared. But as a Christian community, we raise them all up to you, Lord. And we pray, we especially pray the words that your son Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So our second special music will be another hymn from your hymnal. It'll be number 526. What a friend we have in Jesus. So you don't need to stand, but let's all sing what a friend we have in Jesus. <laughs>
and 36 to 43. Matthew. Matthew is filled with parables. And this is the parable of the weeds. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed seeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered. Because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the people of the, his kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out his kingdom, from and weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the blazing furnace, where there will be a weeping and gnashing of teeth then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Dear Heavenly Father, may the words from my lips, the meditations from my heart and soul, May you find them pleasing, my Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. While Jesus was with us, he told us many parables, many stories that had some meaning, some meaning that we could take and learn how to live our lives, learn how to live like Jesus would have us do while we're here on this earth. And the parables were never easy to necessarily understand. And that's why the disciples, towards the end of this reading, they asked Jesus, teacher, master, what is the meaning of the weeds in the field? And Jesus explains this one pretty clearly to us. Some of the other ones, it's not that we have to guess, but they're given to us so that we can think about them. We can internalize them. We can mull them over and say, what is Jesus trying to say? How does God want me to live my life? What do I need to do? What decisions do I need to make so that I wind up on the right side of God and of Jesus and I'm living my life as he would have me do? So in the previous section of Matthew, we learned about other seeds. We learned about mustard seeds, and that a mustard seed, the most tiny seed that you could ever think of, grow, can grow into a towering bush and provide so much life for other things. And depending on where you plant that seed will be how it grows. But that through the 
the might of God and the might of the triune God, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus, they will take care of its growth. You don't want to put it on a hardened path that's all evil, that it will just get trampled. You'd prefer to put it in good soil. But wherever you put it, God will take care of it. And so we go on to this parable, the parable of the wheat and the weeds, that the owner of this field sows good seeds. He knows they're good seeds. But an evil one in the night goes and sows bad seeds. And why would the evil one do that? Because the evil one doesn't want us to follow Christ. He doesn't want us to love God. He wants to sway our path toward that wide open path that is so much easier to follow than the narrow path. And it's interesting. Jesus says, don't go and weed. The owner says, don't go to the weed to his servants. Don't pull out the weed. And it's interesting, the word for weeds in the original language was zizania. And zizania were seeds that were mimics. And they actually, while they grew, they looked like wheat. It wasn't until they were fully grown and about to be harvested that you could tell the difference between the good wheat and the bad wheat, from the good seed and the bad seed. So this owner, knowing the evil one, said, leave it to God. Leave it to the harvesters, the angels, as Jesus explained it. Leave it to them to look to see which are the good and the bad. If you make that judgment and you are self-righteous and you say, I know the difference between good and evil and it is my job to root out that evil, then you can make a mistake because the roots of the bad seeds, the bad wheat, and the roots of the good wheat are intertwined. And if you pull out in your self-righteous anger and what you do, if you pull out those weeds, you're also going to hurt the actual good wheat and the righteous one. So Jesus says, no, that is God's responsibility to do that. Jesus says, I will give my life for you on the cross so that your sins are forgiven. If you follow me and you take me as your Savior, you will be saved. You will be the good wheat. And that in Revelation, at the end of time, it will God, be God and Jesus opening the book of life, the book of judgment, that determines whether we are good wheat or bad wheat. Jesus taught us so much in his parable. You look at the news today and you wonder, what is going on in the world? How did our world get to this shape? How did we get to this point? One headline after another, it seems like the world is going crazy and we watch and ask, what is going on? Sabina com commented on that this week. She said, Michael, you seem down this week. You seem more depressed than normal. And I said, unfortunately, in my other job, I get briefed about what's going on in the world. And every time I get one of these briefings, I leave those and I'm saying, I don't see how we can survive. I don't see how we as a free nation, knowing everything that's going on in this world, how human existence will prevail and how good will prevail over evil when you see all the things, all the things that I'm briefed on. And it's hard sometimes for me then to say, I know God loves us, but I know that there are trials and tribulations that we will go through. And the study of the book of Revelation is such a good thing to do. There are so many trials and tribulations that we will be going through to get to that point where the book of life will be open and that we will be judged and that Jesus will come again. And we know that. We know the things in the Bible are true. We've talked about that before. Whether it be a parable or whether it be a prophecy, the Bible is real. It is true. And we will suffer. We will keep our faith in order for evil to be vanquished. But in the meantime, 
it is certainly depressing at times to look at the world and see all the things in it. And you know, and you look at the things in your own lives. You might have circumstances yourself that leave you wondering and asking yourself, how did my life get to this point? What has become of me? What decisions did I make that brought me to this place? And were they all bad decisions? At the time I made them, I thought they would be good decisions. And yet, it can hurt. We may have wounds in our lives. We may have betrayals and resentments, addictions, fears, and even loneliness. The list might be quite long if you feel that your life is not where you're hoping that it'll be. So many things that we face in our lives, hardships, illness, the death of a loved one, devastating illnesses, other tragedies. We want to know why, if God is good and loving, why does he allow those weeds to grow up? Why does he allow those things to happen to me? Where then did these weeds come from if we only planted good seeds of wheat? We often live with that idea that if we do good, we will be saved, that through our works, we will be saved. And Paul certainly says that is not true. It is through God's grace that we will be saved. And note that if we do good works, we're doing them because it's showing our love of God. It's showing that we believe that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. And through that, God will save us through his grace. It's not the works themselves, but it's the expression of our love for God that will save us. There's lots of urgencies in the questions I ask. Where did these weeds come from? We want to know what happened and who is responsible. And that's what we want to know when we discover the weeds in our field. And I'm sure many of us have been around our gardens, and we take such meticulous care of them. We plant the seed, we till the soil, we even spray Roundup on them so that those weeds won't grow. And yet, we turn our backs for one second, and the weeds are as high as our vegetables. I didn't grow vegetables this year. Sabine and I grew sunflowers, thinking it'll be great to look across the field at our sunflower patch with the 14-foot sunflowers that we planted all different kinds and sizes. And I went out this morning after <laughs> reviewing the sermon, and I said, oh my gosh, which are the sunflowers and which are the weeds? They're as tall as some of these sunflowers. And I said, if I take my parable to heart, I'm not going to weed them. I'll, I'll let the fall, I'll make sure all those blooms look good. I may snip some of the weeds so I can see them, but that's God will do that for us. He will weed our lives. He will give us the time and attention that we need. He gives us the Bible so that we can follow the way, so that we can be the wheat and not the weeds. The owner says, an enemy has done this. That's it. He doesn't explain why the enemy has done it, but he just says that it is. He doesn't identify or even name the enemy. He doesn't give instructions to find the enemy, drive that enemy out, or to punish that enemy. Behind our desire for an explanation, because we are human, we would like to know why things happen, whether it's tragedies in our lives or joys and concerns. We want to know, Lord, why did you do this? Read the book of Job. Job questioned, but he never gave up his faith of God. And we need to be doing the same thing. The owner doesn't care about the owner. He cares that at the end of time, the bad wheat can be separated from the good wheat. And the bad wheat will suffer its final reward, if you will, and the good wheat will have everlasting life. The reality, according to Jesus, is that our lives and our world are a field in which there is good and evil, life and death, joys and sorrow. That which we want 
and those things that we don't want. And it all grows and lives side by side. The wheat and the weeds stand together in our world and in each of our lives. That, Jesus says, is the kingdom of heaven while we're here on this earth. It's what it's like. The good news is for us that despite the weeds in and around us, the kingdom is still here. It may be a little more hidden for some of us, but it is still here. We just have to look for it. We have to embrace it. We have to embrace God and Jesus, our Savior. The weeds do not overcome or make absent God's kingdom. It may not be the fullness of the kingdom that we will have while we're in heaven, after the tribulations and all the evil is forever conquered, but it is nevertheless the kingdom of God here on this earth. So what about them weeds? What do we do about them? Surely, surely we should be doing something. But Jesus says, let them grow. Let them grow until the harvest. Might not make sense to us as humans because we want to solve problems. We want to have answers to everything that we see. We want to eradicate for all time all the evil in the world. We want to let peace be here on earth. We do need to make a stand, to draw a line in the sand, establish some boundaries so that we can stay on that narrow path. Don't you want us to pull up the weeds, the workers asked. No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the good wheat along with them. It seems the separation between the wheat and the weeds is not as clear-cut as black and white, as Facebook, tweets, the media, our politicians, world leaders, and our personal opinions would have us believe. There is so much gray between the ends of black and white. Ultimately, ultimately, I think we sometimes forget this, is our periods of self-righteousness. We show itself to be weak and not weeds. Maybe love and forgiveness are what the life in the mixed field of God's kingdom and this world is like. We will suffer the weeds for the wheat, but we know at the end, at the end of time, the evil will be separated from the good, and the good will be rewarded for all eternity to live in heaven with God and his son, Jesus. So can you do that this week? Not worry so much about the weeds, but look for the wheat. Look for the good. Live your lives as if that weed didn't count. Don't worry about being self-righteous. Live your lives to the good and be the wheat in Christ's parable. Think about God's love for each of us, our love for each other, and forgive each other and let them darn weeds be. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn is Let There Be Peace on Earth. Number 431 in your hymnals. Please stand if you are able.
forth today, ready to catch glimpses of God's never-ending, unstoppable, and always present love at work in the world. And when that love feels hidden and distant, breathe deep and remember, unrevealed does not mean inactive. Lord, as we leave this place, please look upon us with your grace. Watch over us with your love. And surround us with your never-ending peace. Our service is ended. Go in peace, beloved, and serve.